Hello, I'm James Baxter. I'm the supervising animator for Spirit. And today we are going to draw Spirit. To make it a little easier, we've uh, broken it down into uh, four easy to follow steps. Step one, from the inside out. Step two, flesh it out. Step three, details. And step four, just add color. If uh, you are anything like I was before I started this film, you'll know horses are pretty tough to draw. But uh, the important thing is, have fun and uh, get your pencils ready. You'll need plain white drawing paper, a soft lead pencil, sharpened, an eraser, and some other colored pencils. Whatever color you want them to be, really. Now the secret to drawing horses is draw them from the inside out. That is, know what their skeleton is and put that in first, and then you can draw the horse over the top. With horses, your backbone is pretty straight along his back. Now a good tip when you're sketching this stuff in is don't press too hard, because you might have to rub it out later. Now remember that horses' bodies and legs are pretty square. So if you imagine this is like a square, and the floor is down here, his body is about a sort of a square shape. So if you start putting in his rib cage, right here, and then his shoulders out in front, and his rear end back here, and then put in circles for where all the joints are. Now, horses have just the same joints as you and I do, but they're in slightly different places, and their bones are all different lengths. So, if you try and think about this as your arm, this is your elbow right here, but with the horse, it's right up next to his body. And then this is your forearm right there. And what looks like the knee on a horse is actually your wrist right here. And then let's have the other leg coming out in a nice sort of proud way. So elbow, wrist, hand. His back legs start way up here and that's his thigh down to his knee right there. And then this is his lower leg. And then his foot, again, unlike you and I, instead of being flat on the ground, is actually up like he's got platform shoes on, or rather stiletto heels. <laughs> so he's standing on his toes like that. And he's got his feet at the bottom like that. There's one leg, and we'll put the other leg a bit further back like that. His head is sort of a circle up there, and a sort of a cone shape, and I usually put another circle at the bottom, like right there. So he's looking at you. That'll be more fun. You have to make sure that his neck connects up to his head, like that. Now we've got a basic plan for our horse. Now we're done with his skeleton, we can put in his surface, roughing out his muscles and all the things on top of the skeleton. Let's start with his back. Now his backbone goes straight through his body, and that's actually a really good line to use because it tells you where the tail comes out. There's a big bump there, it's like a couple of mountains, like that, it's a shape like that. Then his neck starts at the top of his withers and attaches to the back of his head like that in a nice curve. We have to describe the front of his shoulder with a line that comes down here and in there like that. You see his pelvis right here? There's like a little change of direction around the end of his pelvis like that. And then when you're drawing his belly, it's good to try and point his belly towards that little change of direction. That's where that goes to. And then we have to start drawing the legs, the hard part. We've got our joints worked out so we know where everything goes. And we have to put the muscles on the top. He's got nice big forearms and an elbow right there. And then sometimes I put a, a faint little line right here. So this forms sort of a triangle really. 
then the thin parts are where the bones are and the thick parts are where the joints are. So it goes thin down to his fetlocks. On you, that would be the junction between your finger and your palm right there, the horse's fetlock. And then his hooves, which are sort of cone-shaped, really. There's one. Now put the other leg in. Now his leg is further forward than this one, so I'm going to draw it so you can see his other shoulder in there. And then his muscles in between. So again, thick up the top. This joint is actually pretty square, it's like a little box. And then the thin part, and then the joint at the bottom, and then we'll pick this hoof off the ground. Yeah, looking more like a horse? Good. Okay, so the face, we've got our two big volumes, we've got the back of his head and his nose at the bottom, and now we have to sort of square it off, make it almost like a brick. So you can see the top of his nose, and that's the top of his eyes, where his eyebrows, his eyes sit underneath there, like that. And then we put in his cheek, down the bottom, like there. And then his muzzle at the end. Give him a little smiley face. Put in his other cheek over the, this side. And his eyes, which sit sort of almost on the side of his head. Now his ears go right where his head meets his neck. I also think of them as tubes, which have been sort of uh, shaped into almost like little flower petals. His hair comes down to a point right in the middle of his forehead, right there. It comes from his neck down to a point like that. So that's where it grows from, so that's where it's starting, so then we can just think we're gonna put the hair out there like that. Now we've got the head, we can put in where that neck joins into his, into his head, right around there, just underneath his throat. And the other part of the neck comes in and joins just above his chest, right there. Now let's draw his back legs. From the front, the muscle comes down to the knee, like that. So you've got the knee. And then this is his ankle. And this is pretty sort of parallel, this, this little bit right here. And we've got our little back of the pelvis area right there. We can just join that up down to here. And then the leg starts to get seriously thin at the bottom. And then again, just like the front legs, we put in that fetlock joint above the hoof. And the hoof itself. Okay, let's draw the other leg. Let's put in his hair. Now this is the fun part because you can just sort of do whatever you want with his hair and just imagine it going in like really interesting directions. And the secret is really not to make it all the same, to do big bits and little bits. His main stops right at the point of his withers. If we see it back there, we see like a little uneven line of hair at the top. And then we have to put in his forelock. So that's his hair, and then his tail. We know where his tail comes out because we've got this spine running through, so it comes out right there. And the bone inside his tail, when he's happy, he tends to carry it up high like this. So remember there's bone in there until, until here, and then you can start to curve it and hang the, uh, the tail down like a flag. The trick to this is just trying not to get in the way <laughs> of the legs. There we have it.
Right, the next step is to add some details, his eyes and his hair, and I've got my nice black pencil for that, and my eraser so I can get rid of some of this skeleton. I'm going to put some details in on his face. So this is my black pencil and I'm going to draw in his muzzle and the line where his muzzle joins the rest of his face and a nice smile and his nostrils which are sort of triangle shaped in there. His eyes, soulful eyes, which have sort of a thick eyelash over the top his eyebrows, which real horses don't have, but spirit does. And that's really just so we can uh, do all the acting in the film. So this is the part that requires the most attention to detail. He's drawing the eyes, because that's the part that most people look at first. Okay, so I think that's his face pretty good. Put a few more nice crisp outlines on him. I think we're almost ready to color him in. All right, step number four, color. I've got some nice spirit-like colors here. So sort of a very dark chocolatey brown for his uh, mane and tail and his uh, stockings. And um, a couple of sort of brownish colors and a yellowy color for his body. So uh, let's get at it. Remember, when you're coloring him in, not to get too mechanical with the coloring. So when I'm coloring the hairs on his tail, I'm trying to do it in the direction of his tail, like this. You can put a little shine on his tail too, just by leaving out a bit of color. Give it that nice shiny look. Let's do his mane in the same way. I'm not going to go crazy with the shadows, but I am going to give it a bit of a, a feeling that he's sort of a bit lighter on the top than he is on the bottom. So when I'm doing his belly, I'm again thinking of that round shape and letting my pencil flow with that round shape a little darker under there and a little lighter on the top his nose and his forehead a little lighter as if the sun is hitting it and then let's do his stockings which are pretty much the same color as his mane and tail and his muzzle too make that just a little lighter than his mane so you can see it properly his nostrils and then his hooves, which I'm just going to use the black and press very lightly so we get that gray color. I'm going to take another color, a lighter yellowy color, and go over the top because sometimes I think it's nice to mix colors up. We're just about done. All right, well, I think that turned out pretty good. Don't worry if yours doesn't turn out quite like that just yet. It took me a lot of years to get this far. The only thing left to do is to sign it. <laughs>